The lesson from Hebrew scriptures is taken from the book of Psalms. It is Psalms 147, verses 1 through 6. The psalmist writes, Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praises is lifting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and fixes their wounds. He, de he determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. He is our Lord and abundant in power. His, uh, his understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. The Gospel lesson is taken from Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. As you are able, please stand for the reading of the Gospel. <clears throat> they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the re surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord for God's people. You may be seated. Alex and Benjamin, thank you for sharing God's word with us this morning. I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Holy God of Jesus, holy God in Jesus, be among us this morning. Speak to our imperfect lives. Help us rise above our frailties. Shape our work together in this community here at St. Paul Church and direct us all, once again, to life. Amen. Sarah Offner Seals is a United Church of Christ pastor and she tells the story of a woman named Anne. And she met Anne while living and working out on the West Coast. This was about nine years ago. And of Anne, Offner Seals writes these words. Anne had not been to church in a very long time. The fact of the matter was she had some demons. She had dropped out of college long ago after her drug and alcohol use got out of control. She had since spent years struggling for survival. Occasionally homeless, often in destructive relationships, sometimes with married men, other times with men who were also drug users. She struggled with depression, she had a severe eating disorder, and over time she became pretty certain there was not a soul on earth who would ever be able to love her or accept her, not even herself, and especially not God. Because how could God ever love anyone as broken, as afflicted, and unclean as she was? Well, as sad as that description of Anne is, there is apparently one event in Anne's life which pretty much brought her to the breaking point. Reckless in her lifestyle, she eventually found herself pregnant 
The father was a married man, and he had no interest in being the father of her child. And so with no place to live, no money to live on, and no one to turn to, and did the only thing she could think to do, she terminated the pregnancy. She was ashamed. So ashamed, so distraught over that decision that she began to use drugs and alcohol all the more in a desperate attempt to dull anything she had that was feeling the hurt. She had hit rock, rock bottom. Now during this time, Anne found herself hanging out in an area of San Francisco. It was a part of the city that was considered to be a seedy part of the city. It was heavily populated by poor families. It was frequented by the homeless. There was a heavy concentration of new immigrants who had not yet learned to speak English. It had an abundance of food stands and flea markets. It was loud and it was dirty. But it was also colorful in its diversity. And being in that setting somehow allowed Anne to be distracted from the bleakness, the pain in her own life. Now in this neighborhood, there was a tiny church. It was an unassuming little paperclip church. It was housed in a ramshackle building with poor landscaping, only a few scraggly looking trees out there on the little bit of lawn that it had. Stained glass windows looked so filthy that you couldn't see even the light come through and, and, and illumine the color. To the casual observer, the church almost appeared to be abandoned. Yet Anne knew that if she was in the proximity of that building on Sunday mornings from 10 to 12, she would hear the sounds of the, the most beautiful gospel music, humble music coming out from its front doors. And there was something about that music that drew her in, something about it that made her want more. And so she began dropping by that small paperclip church more frequently, never going farther than the front door, mind you. You see, she couldn't bring herself to actually go in because in her mind she was unclean. She simply had too many demons, too much brokenness. She didn't want those people inside that church who all seemed so kind and gentle and good to see her for who she really was. And if they did, she thought, they might not let her stay. But one day, for reasons that she was never really able to explain to other people, Anne felt brave. Brave enough to step past the doorway. And so she slipped in quietly, as quietly as was possible for her to do, and she found that place in the back of the church. And something happened to her that day. Something that she would never forget. To her complete and utter amazement, no one asked her to leave. No one rejected her. Instead, the people of that small little paperclip church smiled at her and welcomed her. And they said things to her like, we're so glad that you're here. Thanks for coming. And incredibly, instead of feeling judged, Anne felt suddenly taken care of. And in that moment, Sarah Offner Seals reports, Anne began her journey of coming back to life. I have to wonder if that unnamed man that we encounter in the Gospel of Mark this morning if he had a story something like Anne's. I have to wonder what his particular demons were. I 
wonder how long it had been since he had stepped into a synagogue. Maybe how many times he had walked by that particular synagogue in days gone by, even stood in its doorway. Some part of him wanting desperately to go in, but afraid of being rejected, afraid of being excluded. But then Mark tells us, on this one particular Sabbath day, this man with his demons hears about Jesus, who is there in Capernaum. And he hears that Jesus will be there in the synagogue that Sabbath day, and his heart begins to beat a little faster. And for some reason that he will never be able to explain to anyone else. He dares to enter in. Maybe the faint music of a gospel hope overwhelms his fear. But instead of being rejected, he discovers the attention of Jesus drawn in the direction of him with compassion, with healing. Mark tells us that the demons within him cry out to Jesus, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And for Mark in his gospel, that is a rhetorical question. Because the answer you see, what have you to do with us, Jesus? The answer you see to that question is everything. Jesus has everything to do with our brokenness. Jesus stops his teaching. He's been teaching with authority. Everyone is mesmerized, but he sets it aside. He stops all of the proceedings right in their tracks, and he takes the need of this broken man, this man with his many demons, and he moves him to the front of the line. You know, sometimes I think we operate under the illusion that only those who had their lives perfectly in order, have a place in the church. That you and I must be careful to present ourselves to one another as, as happy and without demons, lest we risk rejection. I think sometimes we think that if we aren't happy or if we are in fact wrestling with, with the demons in our lives, the issues that we face of one sort or another, relationship issues, economic issues, personal struggle issues, church is the last place we would ever reveal such things. But that's an illusion. To operate under that illusion is to ignore the words of Jesus himself who said that those who are well, those who are whole, those who have their lives all together and are right with God and have, have a sense of God being present in their lives each day, they have no need for a physician. But he didn't come for those who are well, those who are whole, those who have their lives all in order came for those who are broken and hurting. Those battling the demons that can rob us of life. My friends, we remember these things this morning as we gather around this table. As we are offered a place at the table. As we are offered a welcoming meal. As we are reminded once again, that in broken bread, our lives are never too broken for God. Amen.